So we move on to the, the other uh, the modifications or advancement that we have made in a, uh, a JTR uh, gas tank arc welding is uh, the buried TIG. Its uh, colloquial term is buried TIG. So uh, we also know from the physics that uh, GTAW is a very uh, energy inefficient process. Okay, again, we will uh, in, in this class we will see when we calculate the melting efficiencies, we will uh, identify why the TIG is not efficient because the whatever heat is generated is not transferred fully, is not it? So, because uh, the cathode is heated up, cathode is heating uh, all the heat to emit electrons, but uh, nothing is going except the, the, the electrons from the cathode. So, we have a lot of uh, heat loss in this process and also the convection conduction radiation would also transfer the arc to the atmosphere, uh, the heat to the atmosphere. So, in order to improve the efficiency, we need to shield the arc, is not it? So, the people thought about it, oh no, why cannot we just use the plasma jet which generate at the arc core to make a cavity in such a way that in uh, you make a well pool and then slowly move the electrode down to the well pool and then this plasma jet can pull the can push the, the, uh, the pool in such a way that the entire arc can be submerged or buried inside the pool. Okay? So, this can be very effective. So, for example, so in this case, so in, in a conventional uh, GTAW, you always have uh, uh, the, the electrode with a distance from the, 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 uh, 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 the liquid surface. Okay? So, in that case, suppose if in conventional way, so how do you get that thing back? Okay. So, in a conventional process, so you have a tungsten electrode and this is your molten pool, is not it? And you have an arc. Right? So, in that case, so the, the, the heat transfer to the atmosphere is enormous because you also have a conduction convection radiation heat losses from the arc and uh, you, the whatever the cathode is you know, emitting it is also like you know if we use an electron negative well, the only electrons will be acting to heat up the workpiece. That is why the efficiency is not there. So, in order to shield the arc or not to maximize the heat transfer from the arc to the pool, so what do you do? So, we slowly once the arc is struck we push the electrode in, in such a way that you know, uh, the plasma jet can pull the molten metal and then make a cavity by the plasma jet and then slowly immerse it in such a way that the, the, uh, the entire arc can be surrounded by the molten pool. Okay? So, in that case, the heat transfer can be maximized, is not it? So, the, uh, the conduction convection radiation can happen to the molten pool. So, it would transfer the heat subsequently to the base material and then melt more. Right? So, by the plasma jet, what is there in the center of the, uh, the arc is used to create a uh, sort of a cavity in which the, uh, the electrode can be pushed inside and then arc can be shielded, can be shielded by the liquid metal and the heat transfer uh, can be efficiently made. So, in that case, the penetration depth can be increased significantly. So, only trick here is the, the plasma jet velocity is in such a way that it should not cause an explosion of the pole. And uh, by carefully controlling the movement of the electrode once the arc is struck with the uh, proper uh, knowledge of the plasma jet velocities and we can create a stable buried TIG process. Okay? So, in that case, the efficiency, the heat transfer efficiency from the arc the pool is in the increase tremendously and by doing so, we, we can increase the efficiency and we can increase the penetration. Yes, it is clear, it is very dark. Yeah. So, this is also commonly used uh, for a thicker section uh, uh, steel wells to minimize, uh, especially if you are using without any filler because it is very difficult to add filler in this case. 
So, if you want to increase the depth of penetration and uh, increase the productivity obviously, so you can use the buried arctic uh, process. Okay, good. So, next is advancement. is uh, uh, like you know the pulse TIG and pulse GTW and then uh, you, you can also have a pulse plasma and you have already I will I have I've, I've taught you about the how the pulsing is going to work right. And if you look at uh, uh, the all these processes there are some rate controlling parameters is not it. So, by understanding by controlling these parameters we can effectively control the bead geometry, microstructure and thereby mechanical properties. Okay. So, in all the advancement what you have seen and in even the conventional process, the rate coating factors, the important factors are of course, current and the travel speed, is not it. So, current determines E, is not it, the equation. So, that is why I always go back to that derivation what you made. So, that determines the heat generation, is not it. And then travel speed, so obviously it's, that is a dynamic situation. So you have a transient uh, heat source, and the speed also controls uh, the the amount of arc energy transferred to the the workpiece for a given time and given area. Okay, so these two are the primary uh, parameters, and we also looked at uh, uh, how the current can be pulsed, and uh, what role of uh, alternating current, change in polarities and how that can improve the stability of the, uh, the arc. And uh, in, 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 a, in the next slides we will see the influence of travel speed um, in the heat, heat in, uh, while looking at the heat transfer and the heat input calculations. And there are some secondary parameters that can also influence the process. For example, arc length. So, arc length is very critical. So, the arc length is very critical because arc ignition is determined by the d, the distance, is not it. So, when you are doing it in a, a arc ignition by electric breakdown, we looked at breakdown voltage right as a function of pressure and then the distance, right. So, it influences the, the arc ignition and the arc length can also be fairly play around to change the heat energy. So, why? If you change the arc length, so what happens to the voltage? So, voltage increases, is not it. But if you increase the voltage, you also change the heat input, is not it. So, heat input, how do you calculate again? What is the heat input equation? Hmm? Efficiency, voltage, current by welding speed. So, in this case, the V, the voltage, if we change, we also change the heat input. And if you change the arc length, the voltage also changes because you also change the distance. Okay? So, you also change the distance that means that the voltage should change. But there is a critical limit because if you keep on increasing the distance, at some point of time you also cause the arc instability because ultimately arc is stable by sustained discharge, is not it? And discharge has to be sustained over a distance. You cannot keep on increasing the voltage, so then you would end up you know, affecting the stability of the arc. So, we cannot play around with the voltage, the arc length. That is why when uh, during welding, when you are doing uh, an, uh, the arc welding process, the rate controlling is always current. Okay? So, voltage is a derived product. Right, so, you cannot really play around with the voltage because voltage is the byproduct, the current is the rate controlling. Okay. So, the arc length you can play around, you can change, but the voltage will also change when you change the arc length, right, and you cannot change it significantly to improve the heat energy, the arc energy, then you would affect the arc stability. Right? And then polarity, polarity can significantly change the heat transfer. We already looked at the change in polarity, if it is electronegative, okay, it is the most conventionally used uh, uh, polarity for GTAW, isn't it? If it is electronegative, you transfer the maximum heat to the, the workpiece, 
because electrons are transferred from the cathode which is electrode which is negative terminal to the workpiece which is positive terminal. So, the polarity can significantly change again the heat transfer. In the shielding gas we also looked at in a very detailed shielding gas is not it. The effect of shielding gases the argon helium how the heat transfer change oxidability change changes as a function of composition of shielding gases how we can play around the composition to get the uh, well bead characteristics changed. And then we also looked at electrode angle is not it the influence of electrode angle on the depth of penetration because if you change the electrode angle and you also change the cathode spot is not it. So, the cathode spot is changed then you also change the arc envelope correct, uh, dimensions right and then filler addition that can also be uh, effectively used to change the mill pool temperature. Okay, so, whether if you are using a cold wire or hot wire and if you are dipping it to, you know, into the, the mill pool, the mill pool temperature can be changed, but it is not really rate controlling, but when, when you have an, an, a GTW with filler, then you can also play around with the, uh, the filler additions rate to change the mill pool temperature. So, these are all the, the important rate, rate controlling parameters when you are doing GTW. So, two process primary parameters are current and travel speed okay. and the other things are all stationary uh, the, the secondary parameters arc length, polarity, shielding gas, electrode angle, filler additions. So, generally we keep secondary parameters constant for a given application and we play, play around current and travel speed right, is clear okay. So, basically so you play around current and travel speed by keeping secondary parameter constant to achieve a good weld. So, such a process map we can generate which can tell uh, so what current and what travel speed can give us very sound well bead right for a given um, uh, secondary parameter as well as the material uh, thickness and composition. So, if the travel speed is too low and the welding current is too low we may end up not forming any weld at all ok. So, so suppose if you have uh, a low current and high travel speed, so you may have undercuts, undercuts means the weld bevel is not fully filled is not it. So, suppose you have a bevel something like that and if you have very low current is not it and then high travel speed, so it may not you may not have weld at all. So, you may have something like this and you will have serious undercuts right. So, if you have very high current very slow speed you melt more is not it. So, you will end up making humping which is also not needed. So, by increasing current tremendously at a slow travel speed that is the melt volume the, the amount of material you melt is increased. So, you will end up melting more and forming humps. So, you need to play around with these the primary parameters speed and welding current to get very good sound well bead. Yes, it is clear. So, that is how we always get uh, we generate such a process maps for a given secondary parameter and uh, the material composition and thickness and we can get such a process maps to identify so what welding current and travel speed will have to operate and this information they are already there. Suppose if you are buying a most advanced microprocessor controlled power source and they have all inbuilt parameters in the synergy in the synergy power source board because they the, 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 the we pay for that right. So, the, the, the commercial power source manufacturer they do all these experiments for us. And then you, you select one program for example, I want to weld uh, say 2 mm thick austenitic stainless steel in bead on plate configuration in auto GNS mode. Then you can choose the voltage and current and uh, the travel speed in such a way that the weld is made with uh, uh, good characteristics right. So, with this we will finish GTW.